Good morning. My name is Pete Whalen. I'm a software tester. Although some people that I work with will question that assertion that I just made. However, we'll leave it up to you to decide. I'm actually thrilled to be here at Agile Testing Days. This is, if I did the math correctly, my sixth time here presenting something. Um, the value of what I'm going to present is entirely dependent upon you. And so with that bit of warning, and anticipating people arguing with me toward the end, which I'm seriously looking forward to, we begin. In a hole in the ground there lived a hobbit. Of course, this is the beginning of the famous Red Book of Westmarch, written by the great Bilbo Baggins many years ago, translated in the early part of the 20th century by Professor J.R.R. Tolkien. Many people foolishly think that Professor Tolkien wrote it. However, when you know the original origin, you know that that's nonsense. Professor Tolkien merely translated Bilbo the Ringfinder began the book, and Frodo, his nephew and, and heir, continued the story, and it was, of course, picked up by their friends and colleagues and distant relations, Peregrine Took and Mariatic. Brandy Buck. First two sentences, which is what's on the screen, challenge the very basis of what a whole is. And I suggest to anyone doing software that you learn that lesson from this book and consider what your beliefs are. When you think of something, is that what we're really talking about? And here we are, we begin. Once upon a time, but I find once morning long ago, I find that a much better introduction than once upon a time, don't you? Because what you're going to get today is a story. You see, there was a time when developers weren't called developers, when people wrote programs and we did stuff. I'm getting out of the light so that I can see you. And, and people did things, and, and they wrote software, and they did database stuff, and designed file systems. And amazingly, those same people tested the code that other people did. So developers tested developers' code, and it, it was weird. Because there were always the same people doing this work. And, and it just struck people as, this is the way that it's supposed to be. And today, people will go, but this doesn't make any sense, especially since my little clicker. There we go. Yes. I, ha I hate it when the cues don't, don't come up when they're supposed to. Because the people doing the work were all the same people. You wrote code. I wrote code. You tested my code, I tested your code, we worked on it together, that was normal. You'll note that I have not said tester or developer, because the job titles were different, at least where I was. How could that possibly be successful? We didn't have testers. We didn't have file structure specialists. We didn't have business analysts. We didn't have people talking to customers. We didn't have people who were people people. We had people who wrote software. If you ever saw the movie um, Office Space and the two Bobs coming in, well, what do you do? Well, I talk to the engineers and I talk to the customers and I take the specs from the customers and bring it to the engineers. Well, how come you do that? Because they're not people people. I'm a people person. Except we all had to be people persons. We all had to be able to talk to people. We all had to be able to understand database structures, file systems, how the code worked, how everything worked. We needed to be able to understand what the world was. That's when I got my beginning in software. Contrary to some of the people on the team that I work with, it was not hammers and chisels on stone tablets chiseling in zeros and ones. It only seems that way. 
Something interesting happened, though. In the early 1980s, there was a U.S. Supreme Court decision, a pair of them actually, that uh, said, yes, companies could actually monetize the value of software. Instead of becoming something that could be licensed and used, it could be sold, which mean, it may, means that it became an asset, which means that people who made software are now in production. And managers went, we know how to do this. We know how to control production. And so we're going to go and do all this stuff and we can fix the value. We know what this is worth because we know what it costs to produce. And we can make this a manufacturing process, which is much easier to understand because, frankly, we don't get how software gets made. But as long as we can say, as long, do it like this, everything is good. And so we came up with things like reducing steps to increase efficiency. We can define them so that we've got bits and pieces and everything is happy and everyone is joyful. Okay, some of you are beginning to catch on. The titles on the slide aren't about software, but actually they are. I'm just going to let this scroll for a second. Because this pretty well sums up what the next logical step was. People were pulled away from doing things because developers developed. And if developers are just developing, that means we have to have somebody to test. So testers did testing. And since developers were developing, they really didn't have time or the expertise, obviously, to do design work, so we needed designers. And then because we've got these people doing all the stuff we need people doing, does anybody know what a business analyst really does? <laughs> Really? A product owner? Come on, give me a break. Because I, I remember sitting, sitting around coffee one day and people said, they published a job opening for a business analyst? What is that? A bunch of old farts like me. Of course, they were my age now, but anyway. The problem became Specialization grew, and it tightened. And the idea of working together as a team, taking off the jacket, not having, not having a position, not having a title, rolling up the sleeves, collaborating, was considered evil. All four syllables, evil. Programmers stopped programming and developed. Designers did stuff. All this stuff happened. And they got more and more rigid, more and more carefully structured. Because developers write code. That's what they do, right? Anybody work in a shop like that? More or less? I did once. Because let's face it, developers don't have time to do testing. Really, they don't have time to do testing. It's too... This minutia, I mean, let's face it, if, if they did good work, you don't need to test, right? <laughs> and our developers are awesome, therefore they don't need to test. because we don't want them wasting time. Because if they're wasting time, they could be doing new things like write, writing new features. That brings us to testers. How many people in this room are testers? How many are but don't want to admit? <laughs> oh yeah, I see a hand went up, okay, yeah. Because let's face it, developers are important. Testers just don't have time to learn how to be a developer because developing is cool. 
Software testing is a challenge. We won't even go into what is software testing. I'll presume that some people know. But the result is that testers found themselves quickly in a position where they were doing testing and only testing because they just don't have the wherewithal to be a developer. You see a lot of organizations where testers get are listed as an entry-level kind of position where you join the software organization as a tester and when you're good enough you become a developer maybe and you get to do all this cool stuff except for one minor little thing. If they were really that good, they'd be hired as a developer, wouldn't they? Because this is just the way that it is. They don't understand how code works. They don't understand how databases work. They don't understand any stuff. They're not even good at being a BA, whatever a BA is. Systems thinking is hard. So we'll just let them not worry about that. Just hear the requirements. Just test the requirements. Make sure it works. I'm just going to let this one scroll as well. Because let's face it, developers can't really do good testing. They don't understand. They don't have the mindset. They presume that everything's going to be fine. Are there any flaws in that? And your point is? Well, yeah, but let's face it, we're not talking about unit testing, we're talking about real testing, right? Because we need a test plan, and we need to go and show this, and we need to be able to have all the spreadsheets to show what was done, because that's real testing. Except developers are too busy doing development work to do that, and all this minutia. Right? How can you test without a test plan? You need a test plan. Because we need to be able to show that, that we're thinking about this and that we're designing this. Wait a minute, I'm not talking about... Wow, what did I just say? Can you believe that? I'm sorry. Oh, good, 15 minutes, hot diggity dog. Good, because I'm at the point, I'm at the good part. Has anybody run into those kinds of mindsets? I, yeah, I think if, I'm sorry? Sadly so. Yeah. So I'm going to look for people who want to go on an adventure with me and help change that. Oh, wait a minute, yeah. Because, let's face it, testers, hobbits, like being comfortable. <laughs> we like knowing what we're supposed to do, and it gets very comfortable to be in that position. And you know what? Developers do the same thing. People who write code for a living like being the ones who write code because it's comfortable to them. I'm going to suggest that maybe comfort is the problem. That first slide, and this was a hobbit hole, and a hobbit hole means comfort. The problem isn't the hole, the problem is the comfort. We, as a profession, as a craft, have become comfortable letting other people define what we are and what we do. and we certainly don't want to be late for dinner. <laughs> because that happens. So the people whom I will now refer to as development specialists, how did they become specialists? Let me rephrase that. The people who are developers on your team, what makes them developers? Okay, but how, but how do they, yeah, the, the, the comment was a lot of them get sucked into what the role says they should do, but what makes them a developer? 
they write code. Is that it? They have a title. <laughs> oh, God, I love this conference. <laughs> I did a dry run of this back with the uh, local testing meetup, and they all kind of looked at me and went, don't be stupid. Whereas here, people are willing to go and jump in, play along. That's awesome. So my real question, why do developers think the way they do about software testing? That's really kind of my question. That's what they learned in college. Possibly. Possibly. Yeah, nobody likes admitting that their baby's ugly. <laughs> Don't spoil the code. The code is ugly. The baby's ugly. Nobody wants to admit they've got an ugly baby. I have seven grandchildren. I can say that. So testers, who've got that rather smug attitude, because that's what it is about software developers not being good testers and not being able to test, where did that attitude come from? Ideas? Yeah. Sure, okay, so situational blindness, people get so deep into it, they don't, they're not looking for the flaws, right? Yeah. I think there's more to it than that. I think testers tend to look down on developers and say, well, developers don't make good testers. Because they don't really want to admit what the issue is. They're feeling pressure to be a cool kid. And the easiest way to be a cool kid is to say, I'm a cool kid, they're not. I've never been a cool kid in my life, so I can, I can look back and say, yeah, I recognize this. How about the testers who agree with developers that testers are subordinate or are second-class citizens within the organization to developers? Where does that come from? Anybody run into that? Because of the paycheck. That's possible. But has anybody run into that kind of an attitude where, where testers will just go, yeah, you're right. You're better than we are. You're the cool kids. We kind of stink. I believe that's the work of an evil wizard. We won't name him, but I suspect that and he's got a hand in it. So I'm going to ask each of you, and this is more a rhetorical question. When you started working, doing what you're doing for a living, how good were you when you started? Not good. Mediocre. At, at best, you were mediocre. Yeah, most people stunk. There's other words that I, that I was tempted to use, but this is being recorded for posterity, so I'm not going to use them. I don't want to get home and find out that I've been fired. Uh, <laughs> yeah, my boss is listening. Oh, boy. How did you get better? Practice. Practice. Learning. Somebody showed you new stuff. You went out and you looked to make things better. So if you're a tester and you made yourself better by doing learning stuff, how about developers? Is it possible that we could teach developers how to do good testing? Brace yourselves, here comes the scary part. 
Is it possible that testers can write production code? Yes. Yes. Is there anybody who thinks that's a really bad idea because at best you're going to get a mediocre developer instead of an extremely good tester? Oh, come on. <laughs> one person, the room, <laughs> there's 30 of you in here. Only one of you thinks Really? Okay, how many people wish they would have stuck their hand up but weren't quite brave enough? I'll close my eyes. <laughs> because if we work together, if we take the time to reach out and help developers understand us, maybe they'll take the time to understand, to help us understand them. 30... 30 some odd years ago, I think before some of you were born, I wrote my first production code. For 23 years, I was a software tester exclusively. Not writing production facing code. Yes, I still did some code, but it wasn't stuff that went into production. I've checked in more stuff in the last eight months than I want to think about into production. It runs, holy cow. <laughs> I got a phone call from my manager the other day going, hey Pete, um, that Sprock that you just checked in? Yeah. That's really awesome. Do you have any idea how much faster it's running than it used to? It's like, nope. <laughs> That's awesome. If, if an old fart like me can do it, how come people like you can't? Is there anybody who thinks they can't? Is there anybody who hasn't had the opportunity? Oops, get back here. Why did I start doing it? It's simple. I kept finding things that I could not comprehend why, why, why how the developers were running into stuff. How is it that they were going to what problems were they having? I wanted to find out. Easiest way is to share their problems. Now, some organizations will mandate that developers have to test and testers have to do development. And, they're gonna, and people are gonna go, I don't wanna do that. Well, too bad. As long as there's room for people to do what they are most comfortable with and yet work with the other stuff and understand what is going on, we can find ways that we can work together. We can find ways that our individual strengths can help each other, can compensate each other. Because the problem with that breakdown of stuff isn't that it wasn't agile. It was that it was controlled. There we go, that's the correct slide. People worry about stuff that just doesn't matter. Worrying about this stuff, as Thorne Oakenshield said, that is what matters. The relationships that you build, the conviviality, the friendship, that matters. And that will help you through all sorts of issues. Right, I'm officially out of time. T is at four, come by any time you like. That's my contact information up there. Um, I think we've got a couple of minutes for questions, and if people wish to discuss anything or argue with me beyond this, I'll be outside in the hall, and I'll be in the, um, uh, the, this, uh, the, the, the replay of this later today. I'll be in uh, the room, so if people are sitting in the room, I'll be sitting right back there, which is kind of weird because I'm pointing to where I'm not actually there. Yes, questions, complaints, observations. Nobody? Nope. Yeah, the, the, the lights blind you. I don't quite know how this works. Um, you've spoken about the yeah, traditional uh, patterns of more or less uh, people being pushed or uh, into uh, certain roles and the, the values about 
one one year a role being uh, of another. But I've also encountered uh, a couple of organizations who take opposite paths. Like, for example, that if a person has uh, 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 yeah, proven uh, his worth of, over a couple of over several years uh, as being a good developer, then he was allowed to join the testing circle. Because you were, uh, because uh, the, that company, you were, uh, they had to do both. That actually is similar to how I became a full-time tester. That we had, uh, okay, for people who haven't met Eric, have a talk with him, have a coffee later. Excellent ideas. Now, having said that, that's similar to how I got into this nonsense in testing, because the company that I had uh, uh, was working for a self-distributed retail grocery chain, and the world came to an end one night when a bunch of jobs crashed and the re suggested retail price for every item in their warehouse was changed to one cent. All 50,000 items. Vice President of Accounting, the Lord High Mucky Muck and boss of the, of the Vice President of Information Technology came into pounding on the table the desk of the Vice President of IT going, how could your QA people have allowed this in? And the answer was we didn't have any. A week later, I was the test lead. <laughs> because I had warned them about it. <laughs> but yeah, questions? Anyone else? No? Yes? Um, often, uh, I've noticed that when you approach uh, developers about maybe learning tester skills, actually the, the, just actually the mention of the word test or testing is enough to automatically put them off. And I wonder if there's kind of any other approaches to get them to learn it without them actually realizing they're learning it. <laughs> You're coming to any the thoughts? games night tomorrow, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually did that with my, t with my uh, my, my scrum team, my development team. And it's like, we've got a bunch of games for you guys to play. I got the permission of the boss and said, we're going to do some games. And after doing games for a half hour, 45 minutes, they were having an absolute ball. And it was pattern recognition and, and event analysis and things like this that we were working through. And somebody said, this is pretty cool. What do you call this? I said, this is testing. <laughs> and they went, this is what you do when you're testing our stuff? I go, yeah, this is what I do. All of a sudden, that led to a two-hour conversation about how testing works. So I was very sneaky. Of course, they were Americans, and so if you're working with, with a bunch of folks in England, that might be a bit of a challenge. They're, 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 they're sly that way. I shouldn't have said that. I'm about to get... <laughs> Okay, I think I've got 40 seconds or so. Anyone else? Anyone with questions that they don't want to say on camera? Okay, I'll be in the hallway, I promise. And I'll be in the bar tonight. Thank you very much for your attention. I appreciate it.